Hello my dear students this is Muhammad Zubair and today we are going to discuss 10th class chapter life process so my dear students how can we say that whether something is alive and not alive so look here a dog is running a man shouting a cow chewing curd a cow chewing curd how can we say that this dog man cow or alive so my dear students running shouting chewing so these are the characteristics of having life so running shouting chewing these are the characters of having life so by this we can simply say that these are these organisms are alive that's right now what if this dog cow and man asleep when this dog man and a cow asleep now how can you say that whether these organisms are alive or not alive we can see them we can see them breathing even these animals are not doing anything we can see them breathing by this we can say them we can say they are alive they are alive that's right and uh, now what about plants how can you decide whether the plants are alive or not alive how can you say that then we can say the plants in the green color so we can say that they are alive now what about the plants which are having the leaves other than green how we can say that they are alive or not alive so we can say that the plants grow over time this is the characteristics of life so we can say that the plants are alive so we can say some sort of movements also will be occur in the organisms which are uh, indicating the uh, having life okay so we cannot uh, sometimes we cannot simply decide uh, something is alive or not alive is simply based on the visible movements some plants are there they can't show vid uh, any visible movement from the outside but they are alive and some animals are there from the outside they will not show breathing but inside they are performing the breathing process okay so my dear students in the multicellular organisms they are made up of many tissues many tissues each tissue has number of cells each cell which is made up of many molecules okay in each cell in each cell there will be many small molecules will be there molecules and uh, these molecule will show the movement will show the movements these movements are called as molecular movements these movements are called as molecular movements these molecular movements are very smaller to be seen with our naked eye we can't see these molecular movements with our direct eye even these molecular movements are takes place inside the body of the organism and all over the body these molecular movements which keeps the organism alive when you consult a biologist when you ask them is these molecular movements keeps the organism alive they will say definitely yes these molecular movements keeps the organism alive okay so the molecular movements are very important now my dear students so there are some characteristics are there of uh, organisms characters one is the living organisms they will perform the living organisms they will perform okay digestion next uh, they will perform respiration next uh, third one transportation okay excretion next uh, fifth one reproduction sixth one movement and uh, growth responding to stimulus responding to stimulus so my dear students so these are the characters of living organisms the living organisms will show these characters 
like digestion, respiration, transportation, excretion, re reproduction, movement, growth, and uh, responding to stimulus. So these are the characteristics we can decide whether something is alive or not alive. So my dear students, next uh, we will discuss about the life process. What are life processes? The processes which are necessary to maintain the life are called as life processes. Basically, the processes which sustain the life in an organism, that processes, that systems are called as life processes. The simple definition, which are necessary to maintain the life in an organism, that processes which are present, which are occur in our body are called as life processes. The def simple definition, okay, processes processes which are necessary the processes which are necessary to maintain to maintain life in an organism are called life processes so basically the process or systems which are takes place in our body which maintains the life which sustains the life okay so the all these processes are called as life processes so how many life processes are there in our body okay we will discuss now life processes how many life processes are there in our body okay so the first one is nutrition nutrition second one is respiration okay then third one is transportation and uh, fourth one excretion So these are the four life processes which are takes place in our body. So these are the life processes. Okay, and we will discuss one by one. My dear students, in our body, some functions will be takes place. That functions are called as maintenance functions. Maintenance, maintenance functions takes place continuously. In our body these maintenance functions occurs continuously in our body these maintenance functions need a continuous supply of the energy okay so my dear students so the what is the source of uh, energy to supply the energy to these uh, maintenance functions which are takes place continuously in our body what is the source of energy so very good so that is the food the source of the source of uh, energy is food by which process we are getting these uh, sorts of energy that means food that is nutrition by the nutrition process we are getting a source of energy that is food that process is called as nutrition without nutrition we can't get the source of food okay so the organism cannot survive they don't if they don't have the nutrition that's why it is also called as life processes okay so my dear students by the nutrition process, the organism will get the food sources or energy sources that is glucose, glucose, amino acids, okay, fatty acids, glycerol, etc. Okay, then immediately after taking the food, we can't get the energy. Okay. These food molecule, for example, this glucose molecule, this is a food molecule. These glucose molecules should be break down to produce the energy. Most of the, the most of the organisms, they will use oxygen to break down these glucose molecule to produce the energy. Okay. So, this process is called as respiration. The process of acquiring the oxygen, the process of acquiring the oxygen and breakdown of the glucose to produce the energy these process called as respiration so the respiration is also called as life process 
without respiration we can't uh, able to get the energy so that's why the respiration also very important life process okay and my dear students the organisms are two types unicellular organisms and multicellular organisms in the case of single celled organisms in the case of single celled organisms like uh, amoeba which is a single celled organism in the single celled organisms like amoeba the entire surface the entire surface of the this single celled organism which is exposed to and which is in direct contact with the environment environment then this is the direct in contact with the environment entire surface of the organism then how the gaseous exchange how the transport of material food material occurs in this single celled organism it requires a simple process called as diffusion a mechanism by which this uh, transportation occurs the exchange of gases will be occurs okay by the diffusion process only the single celled organisms like amoeba they will take the oxygen which is present in the environment in the air to the inside the cell and uh, they will uh, release carbon dioxide directly into the environment through the mechanism called diffusion okay this is in the case of single celled organism but uh, what about in the multicellular organisms which are made up of more than one cell so how the transportation occurs how the exchange of gases occurs in the multicellular organisms if you if you uh, observe for example human body our body we also one of the example for the multicellular organisms but our cells which are not exposed directly in contact with the environment which are present inside the body our cells which are not direct in contact with the environment so that's why in our body the diffusion will not meet the requirements of the substances the diffusion will not work out why because we have the complex uh, body okay so that's why we require a separate systems in our body okay and next uh, third third uh, life process that is transportation transportation so my dear students let us imagine by the nutrition process we are taking the food now the food will be passes from the uh, mouth to stomach from the stomach to small intestine and uh, in the small intestine the complex food uh, break down into simplest forms like uh, glucose amino acids and fatty acids and glycerol and uh, now the glucose uh, present uh, now the glucose present in the small intestine now the glucose present in the small intestine and uh, by the breathing process we are taking the air which is rich in oxygen now the oxygen molecules are present in the lungs lungs oxygen if this glucose and oxygen present in the in that uh, organs only is there any use no there is no use these glucose and these oxygen molecules should be transported from uh, that organs to each and every cell of the body so that is important for that purpose we require a separate uh, system that system is called as transportation system that system is called as transportation system okay so the transport uh, the transportation system also example for life process without transportation these glucose and oxygen molecules will not travel from one place to other place in our body that's why the transportation is very important and next uh, excretion next one is excretion so my dear students by the digestion process by the digestion of complex food molecules so they will also produce uh, some by products some by products by products of digestion so what are they ammonia okay urea uric acid so these are the by products of digestion ammonia urea uric acid and uh, by products of by products of respiration what are the by products of respiration like uh, carbon dioxide next uh, excess water so these are the by products of respiration so these are waste products these are waste materials 
these materials should be transported and these materials should be discarded to outside these materials should be sent to outside from our body so what happens when these materials accumulate in our body for a long time they will cause dangerous uh, diseases like uremia the condition uremia esrd end stage renal disorder even these uh, leads to the death of the victim also that person also that's why it is very important uh, to separate uh, this is very important to separate the waste materials toxic materials like ammonia urea uric acid and this carbon dioxide excess amount of water these metals should be discarded to outside so for, by this uh, we can separate the waste materials for that purpose also we require a separate uh, system that system is called as excretion that system is called as excretion that's why these four systems are called as life processes can we imagine our life without nutrition no we can't imagine why because that is the only process the, that is the source of which is supplying the source of energy that is food can we imagine our life without respiration no we can't imagine our life without respiration why because it is supplying the oxygen molecules which help in the breakdown of the glucose molecule food molecule to liberate the energy we can't imagine our life without respiration and next uh, can we imagine our life without transportation no we can't imagine our life without transportation and next uh, and uh, we can't even imagine the life without a uh, excretion also which is the waste uh, disposal system waste separating system from our body so that's why these four systems are called as life processes i hope uh, everybody understood and in the upcoming videos we are going to discuss about uh, nutrition respiration transportation and uh, excretion so thank you